Hey everyone, it's Jennifer and thanks for stopping by for another video. This is one that I did for a guest spot over at Simons's Stamp for Stamp Timber. I'm going to be using some new Hero Arts products today and show you a few fun techniques including using texture paste with watercolor and also a fun ultra high embossing powder that creates great dimension. I actually have three different cards I'm going to be showing you in this video today so hopefully you'll be able to take these techniques and put them into good use in many different ways. So let's go ahead and get started here. I have some watercolor paper from Tim Holtz. I really like this watercolor paper. It's nice and thick. And I'm actually taping it onto a cutting board with painter's tape just to hold it flat. You could tape it directly onto your work surface if you want to. So now that I have it taped around the edge, I'm going to add this stencil from Hero Arts in Basic Gray. I think it's a fantastic stencil that would work with many styles of cards. I'm just going to tape this right over my um, piece of paper here. Now, I'm kind of going overboard with the painter's tape. By no reason, by no means do you need this much. I don't know what I was thinking. But anyways, now I'm going to put on some texture paste with a palette knife. I love texture paste. You could use embossing paste also here. But you want to put down a pretty even coat if you would like a smooth look. If you want it to kind of have more of an edge to it, you can put kind of a thick coating where it's all uneven. But I like to go smooth right against the stencil so it's nice and even and kind of uniform. So you'll see it actually doesn't use all that much texture paste to cover it and you can scrape off any of the extra and put it right back into the jar. Once you're happy with the results, you can go ahead and clean off your palette knife, close your jar up, and then you're going to remove the stencil and run it under water so you get all the paste off of it. You don't want the paste to dry on there. Now when you're done, you can see the results that you get. I let this dry for about 20 minutes, and now I'm going to add the watercolor to it. So I want to get the surface pretty wet. So I actually was going to just put on water with a brush, but I ended up just spraying it with water. It was much faster. So the surface is very wet. Now I'm adding some watercolor. I'm using Peerless watercolor. That's what you see over there on the left, but absolutely any kind of watercolor would work for this. You could use Distress Inks even, um, mixed with a little bit of water. You can use any watercolor here. I like the Peerless because they blend so easy on their own and they're super vibrant. You can see I don't have to take much time to touch my brush, my wet brush, to the Peerless paper. It picks up the color very quickly and I don't need much of it to get this vibrant look. And you'll see because my surface is already wet, it does all the blending for me. It just moves as soon as it touches that paper. So the key is to wet your paper first. You could go more vibrant if you want to. I went back and actually added some more green here to the bottom just for a little variation. And then I just run my, a baby wipe along the edges to absorb up any of the extra color and any of the extra water. And then I'm just going to set that aside to dry. So now what's nice about this is it does the work for you. It didn't take long to do that. And when this dries, you'll end up with a really nice watercolor background with lots of texture thanks to that texture paste that's underneath it. And you can still see that pattern because the watercolor kind of settles around it. And it's just beautiful. So now that this is dry, I'm going to go ahead and remove the painter's tape. Now I wasn't real careful to press the painter's tape down firmly along the edge so you can see some of the color kind of crept underneath it. You could have pressed it down harder, but I'm actually going to trim this and add it to a note card so I wasn't worried about it. But look at that gorgeous watercolor texture that you get. I just think that is so much fun. It combines two of my favorite things, texture and watercolor. You could do a variety of backgrounds like this very quickly. Now I wanted a fun banner to go on the card. This is from My Favorite Things. It's their pierced uh, fishtail banner. And I just thought it was perfect for this stamp. This is a new stamp from Hero Arts. It says crafty friends are the best of friends. Now it doesn't have a sticker on it because this was a prototype I got a long time ago from Hero Arts. So you, yours would come with a sticker if you ordered it. Now I'm adding on to this after stamping with Versamark ink an ultra high embossing powder from WOW. This is a silver powder that when it is heated it gives a lot of dimension. It's really got a nice bump to it. So you see these little powder, this powder is actually pretty big powders. They're um, much larger than like a fine powder. So you don't want to tap it too much or a lot of the powder would come off. Another thing is you don't want to take a heat gun directly on top of it. It would blow some of that powder off. So what I do is I heat it from behind and that melts the paper or melts the powder through the paper and you don't have to worry about blowing the powder away. So you see I start behind and then I move to the front and check out the embossed image that you get. It's got so much dimension to it. I love that shine and how it just catches the light. And I think this silver is fantastic and it works really well with this handwritten greeting from Hero Arts. I just love this greeting. I think it's a perfect one. I actually made three of these to send to three crafty friends. So I'm adding this to my card with some foam tape and there we have a very simple card. We'll add some more to that a little bit later. 
But first I want to go on to one of the other cards and show you a variation of this technique. So this time I am stamping my image with Versamark ink right in the center of a piece of watercolor paper. And I always do this on the smooth surface of the watercolor paper. I just find it's more forgiving than the other side that has lots of texture. Now again, I'm going to add this ultra th high embossing powder. Now notice I don't tap much off. And oh, I kind of clumsy there, sorry. Um, I don't tap much off because if you tap it too much, it just knocks it right off the Versamark because these are such big granules. So again, you just be gentle with it. Brush away any with a paintbrush, a dry paintbrush, and then heat it from behind first so you can see it start melting. Isn't that cool? It looks like magic. And then you can bring the heat gun around to the front to finish it, or you can just heat it completely from behind. And look at the raised image that you get. I just think that's gorgeous. Now I'm going to try to tilt this in the light so you can kind of get a feel of how raised this is. It's hard to see in the video, but in real life, there's so much texture to this compared to like an ultra fine embossing powder. This stamp from Hero Arts is one of my favorites because it's a great handwriting. Actually, my friend, her name's Heather, she actually did this handwriting. I think it's a great, strong sentiment to put in the center of a card. Now this time, I don't want a white edge around my card, so I actually am going to tape my piece onto the back, um, tape it from the back onto the stencil. This way, I don't have the painter's tape around the front edge. So once I have it taped to the back of the stencil, I'll flip it over, and there you can see it's completely clear on the front, and I'm going to tape my stencil onto my work surface. I kind of went overboard with tape again, but I did reuse some, so we're all good. Now this time, I'm going to put the texture paste just around the edges, and I'm going to kind of make it messy this time, which is hard for me, but I think it's fun with a sentiment like this one. So I'm just kind of spreading it from the outside in, and I don't want to like have a defined edge for the texture paste on the inside. I just kind of am leaving and it kind of um, kind of staggered and just kind of go with the flow here. So after applying it around all four edges and leaving it kind of rough on the inside edge, we're going to go ahead and take off our stencil once again and let the piece dry completely. After letting it dry and making sure my stencil was clean, you can see a lot of the, of the paste is kind of hanging off the edge once it's dry. I just take a fingernail file and just rub it all along the edge just to knock off that extra and make it nice and smooth. This is a great trick. You could also use one of the sanding blocks for this, but it gives it a nice clean edge. And this is something that works with embossing paste and texture paste. Okay, so now that I have this ready, I want to add some watercolor to it. I'm just going to put some temporary adhesive on the back of this just to hold it kind of flat. Now this time I'm going to add water just in certain areas because I don't need water along the greeting in the background just yet. So I'm putting some water down at the top left corner. Now I'm going in and adding some green. And you'll notice that I put the color down towards the edge of the paper and then work, kind of pull it in towards the center because I want the most color to be on the edge and kind of fade off to the center. So I'm starting with some greens and then I'm moving on to some teal colors and then I'll pull in some blues. But you want to make sure your paper is wet first. This is the key to kind of making this all blend and not take any time at all. Now that I've got that half done, I'm going to go ahead and work on the other side. This is where I decided I wanted more color. I wanted this to be a little bit darker. It was getting a little too washed out to begin with. Now if you put too much color down, don't worry, just take a cloth or a baby wipe and just touch it to the color and it kind of sucks it up and pulls it away and you'll end up with a softer look. And you'll see me do that a few times here. Now after doing that top corner, I'm kind of blending it all into the center with a little bit of water. Decided that I needed a little more vibrant color there on the left, so I went and added a little bit more. And I'm making sure that I pull just a little bit of it into the center so it all kind of blends together. This is really easy to do and doesn't take any time at all and again you can use any watercolors for this. Okay while that dries, and I'm sorry I'm jumping around here, I want to get all three cards in here. While that dries let's go ahead and create these little hearts that I'm going to put on all the cards. I'm just putting tiny little dots of temporary adhesive on some scrap paper. These are hearts that I've cut from white cardstock using the Simons' Stamp Mini Heart Die. I love this die. I'm just pressing it directly onto my dirty Versamark ink pad here and then I'm just gluing them temporarily onto some scrap paper. So I'm going to do this for a bunch of hearts so that I have several hearts for each of the cards that I'm showing you today. Now after I have all these temporarily adhered onto here, we're going to add some of that thick embossing powder. And when the embossing powder is heated and dries on top of these hearts, it'll give a nice dimension to it. Almost looks like an enamel heart um, like, that are very popular these days. 
So I'm going to go ahead and shake on some of that embossing powder. This is going to look sloppy and just like a hot mess, but that's okay. I promise once we finish them off, they'll look nice. This powder is kind of intimidating to work with at first because there's such big granules, but I promise the more you play with it, the easier it gets. And it actually isn't hard to use at all. It just feels like it is. And the trick is, again, to heat it up from behind. Now I'm heating this from behind until I see just a little bit of um, the powder starting to melt. And then I'll go ahead and move my heat gun to the front to finish it off. And this is the point where you'll start to see those hearts become visible once again under the little mess there. And once these are cooled, all we have to do is pick them off of the scrap paper and we have these great silver dimensional hearts. Another thing that you could do is just cut these hearts from silver foil cardstock. But I wanted the silver of this to perfectly match the silver embossed greeting that we did. So that's why I decided to um, do it this way. You could just emboss, uh, heat emboss a large area of silver and then die cut from it, but then you don't get that kind of domed edge on the hearts that you get by doing it this way. So that's why I chose to use this method. Now I'm just picking them off from the scrap paper and now it's time to add them onto our cards. I use multi-medium from Ranger and it's a nice matte finish that's super strong. I think it's helpful to use these tweezers from EK Success that kind of grip onto your um, embellishments and hold them for you. So I'm putting little dots in the different places. You can see I've arranged my hearts where I wanted to glue them before I started gluing. I think this is key to arranging these little guys. And you can also see I kind of do a visual triangle. There's two hearts on the bottom right, two hearts are in the middle left, and then one heart up in the top. I usually do an odd number two. I just want to make it look like it was kind of scattered, but also fill in some of the, the blank areas on that white banner. I'm going to go ahead and do the same on this card, just add the little hearts with some of the multi-medium. Now you can see how this dried with the darker color on the outside edge. I just trimmed it up a little bit and added it to a white note card. And then you see the soft blending that I get in the middle. The key to that was lots of water in the middle and just letting it do the work for you. Now this is another variation. I did it the exact same way as I did the other blue and green background, but this time instead of just using water to blend it, I used pearlized water that I create by mixing perfect pearls, which is just a pigment powder. You put a little scoop of it into your water bottle, into your water mist bottle, and you get this pearly shine. You can use a pearl, any kind of pearl mist that you may have to do this too. So you end up with that great watercolor background, but also some shine to it. And I'll show you a comparison between this and the one with the regular water in a moment. Now this one I decided not to do the little hearts. Instead, I'm scattering these smooth gemstones from Hero Arts, which I just love. They look like little mirror balls just kind of floating on your card. But here you can see the difference. The blue card on the left I did with just straight, straight water. And then the pink and orange card on the right, I did with the pearlized water. So it's got that little bit of pearl shine. And I'll put a link here and in my YouTube description below and over on my blog on how to create that pearlized water. So there you have some of the fun new products from Hero Arts and a great way to combine your texture paste with your watercolor for a fun background. Now, as I mentioned, these cards are part of Stamp Temper over on the Simon Says Stamp blog. I highly encourage you to go check them out because they're sharing so much this month. And I will include links here to Simon Says Stamp. If you're interested in the products I use, I link them below in my YouTube description, or you can head over to my blog at jennifermcguireinc.com where I have photos of these cards and more. Thanks so much for stopping by.